Hello again, it's Jess or Jashi Corinne and welcome back for another plan with me video. In today's video I'm going to be setting up for March 2019, but before we get into that, as per usual, we're just going to have a look at how February turned out. So as you'll remember from my last monthly plan with me, my theme for February was oceans. And thank you again so much for your suggestions, and it was a really fun theme to do. Before I start flipping through the pages, just a slight disclaimer, a lot of this isn't filled in, I'm really behind. But I do have an intention of going in and making sure that it's all filled up before we start March. So on this first page we have my splash page for the month, my calendar style monthly log, my habits and gratitude pages, my health tracker pages, including my healthy habits, my steps, which you can see isn't filled out. I promise I have done more than zero steps this month. The improvements tracker. My meal log. My social media scheduler. Again, quite behind on this one as well. My doodles. Again, behind on that one. A notes page. And then we were straight on into my weekly pages. For my weeklies in February, as you'll have seen, I have this teal kind of theme going on. I have used this washi tape on every single one of them. And this teal coloured Tombow. After this weekly, I also did some goal planning in my journal. At the time of filming this, it's February 23rd, so I haven't started using this weekly spread yet. This last spread here is going to be for my month in review, and then we're into March. For March's theme we have magic, and thank you so much for your suggestions and then voting on my poll. Because I feel like I haven't used a lot of purple in my journal, paired with the fact that it's actually my favourite colour, I decided that for March's colour palette I was going to use purple, black and gold. On this planning page I've just outlined the spreads that I want to include and written down some notes for habits that I might want to track. Before I hand you guys over to the time lapse, just a reminder that any of the equipment I use in today's video is linked in the description box below. Before filming, I as usual went in with a pencil to sketch out where I wanted everything to go. For this month's magic theme, I really wanted to step away from the typical magic styles. So things like Harry Potter and potions and the similar kind of things, which we see a lot of in the bullet journal community. I spent a lot of time searching for bullet journal spreads on Pinterest, related to things like witchcraft, Wiccan, and other forms of spirituality. For the ones that I found, I set up a Pinterest board for what I deemed magic bullet journal spreads. And there's a link to that one in the description box below. I'm not really into using Pinterest, but doing this little bit of research before I started planning out March was actually a pretty good experience. So I think I'm going to use Pinterest a little bit more in the future. For my splash page here, I've just kept it in the same style that I had for February and January, where I have the mini calendar, the space for a quote, which I actually completely forget to put in, and then a section for my tasks and my goals. For the magical symbols I've put on this page, I'm using my Calero Fine Tech metallic watercolour paints in a gold colour. I've wanted these for a really long time, so getting to use them was really exciting for me. With the splash page done, it was on to my monthly log, and you'll see on this page I've already actually laid out the washi tape, the header, and put out the numbers for each day of the month. I find that one of the things that takes me the longest in these setup videos is just writing out all of the numbers for each day. So I did go and do these beforehand because really they're not that interesting to watch and they're pretty self-explanatory. You write a list of numbers from 1 to 31. To make the headers for each of my pages in this month's setup, I just went onto Google and did a search of Celtic fonts. Once I found one that I liked, I typed out each of the titles that I wanted and then when it came to printing, instead of using regular A4 cartridge paper, I instead stuck a brown paper bag over the top of a piece of paper and then printed the title onto that. One of the cool things about this is that when the print ink is laid down on top of the brown paper bag, it gives the letters an ever so slightly imperfect border. So although the letter forms are all consistent, it makes the titles look a little bit more handwritten than just printing on regular cartridge paper. 
With my monthly log and gratitude pages finished off, it's on to my habits and steps trackers. In February, I was finding that I was tracking a lot of what I'm going to call redundant habits. So habits that I either was completely not doing and didn't really have any inclination to do, or habits that I was doing every day anyway, so it didn't really need to be tracked. Because of this, I've limited my habit tracker down to just one page, rather than having it across two like I've done in the previous two months. In March, I have nine habits that I'm going to be tracking, and these are water intake, not eating fast food, engagement on social media, not working past 7 p.m., cleaning the kitchen, tidying up, taking out the recycling, filling in my budget, and reading. Although reading was totally one of those habits that I mentioned where I haven't done it at all this year, I still really want to get into reading, and I have a long list of books that I want to try out. Because I'm only tracking a smaller number of habits for March, and I've decided to use a vertical style habit tracker, this left a lot more room for decoration. As you can see, I've drawn a large hourglass on the right hand side of this page. This one was inspired by a few different images that I found as part of a Google image search of tree hourglass. I again used my gold watercolour to do the sand for this page, and later on I go over it a little bit more because I wanted a little bit more coloration. For the habit tracker portion, I'm just ruling up a grid that's 9 squares across and 31 squares down. So a square for each day of the month for each of my habits. To take up the least amount of space possible, so I don't have to compromise space for my title, I decided to put in my habits as icons this month. For the title, I again just used that Celtic font printed onto a brown paper bag. I stuck each title in this setup down using double-sided tape. For my steps tracker, I again used a grid that was 31 squares down, but this time it was 11 squares across. Each square on this represents a thousand steps, and I'll be colouring in a box for each full thousand steps that I do. Ten of these columns are for up to 10,000 steps, and then the rightmost column is just for any number that I do over that. I don't typically get to 10,000 steps in a day, so normally I don't really use this column very often. I often get questions about how I track my steps, and personally I use my Fitbit and the associated phone app. I know there's a steps tracker in a lot of mobile phones these days, but during the week I do the majority of my moving around without my phone on me. Using a Fitbit gives me a better idea of the number of steps that I actually do. On this page again I had space for decoration on the right, so I've decided to draw out the symbols for each of the seven chakras. Although these are typically depicted in rainbow colours, to make sure that they tied in with my theme, I decided to colour them in purple and gold. So purple using my Tombow dual brush marker, and gold using my metallic watercolour skin. Once I coloured these in, I decided I was going to do a gold outline on the sand, and then about halfway through doing that I decided I actually wanted all of the sand in gold. Although this top down look at my journal doesn't really do it justice, these gold watercolours are totally gorgeous. They catch the light really well, and they're really, really pretty. As I've mentioned, I've wanted these for ages, and I'm hoping to get really good use out of them in my journal. So that I actually knew what each of these chakra symbols meant, I decided to also label them using my Statler Triplus Fineliner. Some of these names are really long, and I was really glad that I didn't lose the game of lettering chicken. From the top down, we have the chakras related to the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, the sacral, and the root. Once the title for my steps tracker was stuck down, it was then on to my meal log. For my meal log, I'm keeping this pretty much exactly the same as I've had it previously. However, the only change I've made is that I'm also including the numbers for each day of the month on the right hand page as well. I was finding it difficult to actually backtrack from the right page to the left to make sure I was lining up my meals for the days correctly. To remedy this, I figured it would just be easiest if I put those day numbers on the right hand page as well. This also means that the columns end up being a lot more balanced, so I don't have smaller columns on the left page and larger ones on the right, like I've typically done.
To finish off this page, I just then added some decoration at the top using different magical symbols. Most of these I just found from a Google search. The upside down triangle with the line through it is the elemental symbol for Earth, while the symbol next to it was inspired by Icelandic magical symbols. In the right hand corner we have another leaf doodle and then it's the return of the munted moon. So as you can see on this side we have little moons which kind of look a little deformed but that's okay and on this side we have little witches hats. To tie my header into my other pages I'm then going in again with my metallic watercolours to add some gold. The sections that I decided to actually use the gold on were selected randomly. With my meal log finished it was onto my social media tracker. And again for this one I went in and put down the numbers for each day of the month and also added in a little bit of washi tape to separate my YouTube section and my growth section. I'd like to take this moment to again thank you guys for your suggestions and voting for my theme this month. Although finding inspiration for this one and actually figuring out what I wanted to do was a real mission, I'm actually really pleased with how all of these came together. If you have a suggestion for my theme for April, I would love to hear it, and please do leave that in the comment section below. Around mid-month in March, I'm going to put together another poll from your suggestions so that we can vote for my theme for April. You guys are way more creative than me when it comes to themes, so getting your input is really valuable. After an excessive amount of line drawing, I'm then onto the banner for this page. Again, I decided to go with those little plant doodles and also one of those Icelandic magic symbols. In the right hand corner, I added in another plant, a pentagram and another earth elemental symbol. Then it was in with my metallic watercolors again. With my social media scheduler all set up, it's onto the final spread for this setup, my daily doodles. For March, I'm going to be releasing not one, but two JC Doodle prompt lists. One which is based on tarot cards, and another one that is based on just magical symbols in general. The nice thing about most magical symbols is that they're relatively straightforward to draw, so it'd be suitable for our doodling beginners. I'm not sure which one of these I'm personally going to do, but as you can see on this page, I've set up each of my doodling boxes to represent a card. After decorating the top banner of my page using those magical symbols again, I'm then using those watercolour paints to add some colour. Although instead of just keeping it to the top banner, I also decided to go and do a gold trim on each one of those cards. And it took forever. I would not recommend this, even though at the end it does look really pretty and I am really pleased with how it turned out. My hand was super cramped up by the end of it though, though I'm going to say that it was probably worth it. Alrighty, and that's where we're going to leave it for today. So as a final flip through we have my splash page, my March monthly log and gratitude log, my habits and steps trackers, my meal log, social media scheduler, and my daily doodle page. Thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to my channel to see the videos I release every Thursday and Sunday. I'll be back again on Thursday with another weekly plan with me video. And so until next time, bye.